Hey everyone, in this training video, we're gonna do a complete overview of our wheel loader training program. So on our YouTube channel, we do have this broken into segments, but what we've had requests for is to put this into one longer format where we'll cover all the different components. So check this out. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna break this training down into four different segments. The first one is gonna be the pre-op inspection. The second will be the basic controls, or I like to call it the 101 training. The third piece will be our more advanced skills or 201 training. And then the fourth is gonna be parking or shutting down of the equipment at the end of the day. So again, we're gonna cover all four of those in this one longer video. Okay, so the first part is the pre-op inspection. Now, this is probably the most important piece. Uh, it's often overlooked, but I definitely need to do a pre-op inspection every time before you operate any piece of equipment. Now, today we're using our Komatsu wheel loader. Uh, we're gonna try and do these trainings. We do a little bit generic in the fact that most of this is gonna apply to any wheel loader. With that said, we always recommend checking the manual. They're always gonna have specific checklists, operating procedures, things for whatever brand of equipment you're using. The final piece I tell people, while pre-ops are really important, I think they're overlooked, uh, I'm also not a diesel mechanic, and nor are you. I think a lot of new operators are intimidated by a pre-op because they don't know what they're looking at. That's fine, just understand that you don't have to be a diesel mechanic. Uh, a lot of the way we do these is just, it's, if it doesn't look right, that's something you need to look into further. But you do need to know the basics on your machine. So again, can't stress that enough. Okay, so for the pre-op inspection, everyone's got a different way they do theirs, and it doesn't really, there's no right or wrong. If you've seen my other videos, I'm pretty consistent in the way I do it, no matter what piece of equipment. So I recommend finding a rhythm or system that works for you and following it. For my pre-op inspections, I first, I do a general walk around. That's high level, looking big picture, just seeing if something doesn't look right. Uh, the second piece is compartments. That's where I'm actually opening the compartment doors, checking fluids, other pieces like that. And the third and final piece is in the operator's seat, basically getting inside the cab and doing my final checks. Now for the general walk around, again, this is where I, when I talk about not being a mechanic, it, you can generally look at something and just say that, that might not look right. And that's the time where you might get a service tech or someone else to look at it. Um, I always start, I do mine counterclockwise. I try and be consistent with that. Again, it's if you get in a certain rhythm, it won't matter what piece of equipment. And I start on the driver's side, or at least the operator's, usually the left side of the cab is usually what I'll do. Now looking at our Komatsu loader, I'm starting kind of top to bottom, you know, left to right kind of. So again, just looking up at the cab, some of the basics we overlook, you know, like the lights, uh, our windows, is there any cracks, damage, anything like that. And then coming down here, I'm looking at my tires. So for your tires on there, you're just looking at uh, if there's too much wear on them, if they're worn down, if you're looking at any big gashes. Now I've seen it before where actually, if you're, depending on what you're driving on, there might be you know, uh, pieces of rebar or something, you might have something lodged in there. So you might have damage to the tire that you can't even uh, tell. So you're looking all the way around the tire and then overall you're looking at inflation. Does it look like it's inflated appropriately? And then is it secure? Are all the bolts there uh, attached? Coming over to the center now, uh, same thing. This is probably, you know, it's one of the, most of the, everything for the wheel loaders packed in there tight where you can't see it. This center point is kind of the one where the articulation is where you can see all the hoses and everything like that. So I'm looking through there, I'm looking at that kind of ball joint that connects it, the two halves there. And then I'm looking through at all my hoses, seeing if there's any damage. If I see anything leaking, you know, uh, grease on this grease joint, anything that just doesn't look right, that's where you wanna, I can look into here and see the main, some of the panels there for all the hydraulics. So seeing if anything looks abnormal. My washer fluid right here, you can flip this up and look in there. They also have a sight glass on the outside to check that. Uh, our transfer case or kind of transmission fluid uh, for the Komatsu is actually you reach in there, there's a little cap, pull that off, I can pull the stick out, making sure that uh, I'm at the appropriate level there. Uh, this is our cabin filter. Uh, anything that normally has a keyed lock on it, uh, those are usually like air filters, things like that. We won't necessarily check those daily, I usually do that on a weekly, uh, but you could open that, check your air filter out. Continuing to come down, same thing on the back tire. Uh, looking at anywhere, anything that sticks out as abnormal on it. Uh, and then also uh, basically secured. Is it secured? All the bolts on there. And then continuing looking back on any damage or anything that sticks out to me on, the, on this side of it. We'll continue around the back. Now on the rear of the wheel loader, again, starting top to bottom, 
looking up. Got your exhaust stack up there. It's kind of tough to see from the rear. You're looking at sides too, but I'm looking up there. Any damage to the exhaust stack, the glass, anything there. Uh, all my lights and everything are intact in the back here. Uh, seeing if there's any obvious damage, any of my tail lights. And then this is the point too where you always try and look under the machine. You know, this is where, and honestly from the other side too, I was looking underneath. You're always looking underneath. The wheel loader is a little bit easier to see than versus like a excavator or bulldozer, but seeing if I see any leaking. Uh, it's the same concept as pulling out your car to the garage and seeing an oil stain on there. If I see something, I might want to look into it. Everything looks intact there. So then on the passenger side, the right side of the machine, similar, looking up top, starting top to bottom, looking down, seeing if there's any damage, anything obvious. Tires are probably your most important pieces on the wheel loader. Uh, so any damage, any gouges to the tire, anything like that. Checking it's properly inflated, making sure all the bolts are on there and they look secure on there. Coming to the center here, same thing, top to bottom, looking up, seeing if anything stands out, any obvious damage, anything like that. And then I'm able to look through the center point here on this side. I already looked from the other. Now I'm getting another angle at it, looking at my hydraulic lines. Uh, there are some grease joints in there, making sure it looks greased appropriately and I don't see anything obvious that sticks out that might be damaged. Continuing to the front, same thing. This tire, any gouges, anything obvious, any obvious damage to it? Uh, does the inflation look uh, appropriate? And then the bolts. Is everything secured on there? Nothing's loose, anything like that. And then I'll continue to the front. And then for the front of the machine, again, windshield, everything top to bottom, I'm looking up. Uh, headlights, things like that. Like I actually see on this, I have a turn signal that looks like it's damaged on the right side there. So things like that you're going to want to note if you see anything. I'm um, looking in the center. This is where I'm looking at the hydraulic cylinder. For hydraulic cylinders, you're really just looking. If I see anything around where that, the seal is, uh, a lot of times it'll show as you might see dust, dirt, stuff like that. That's where if the oil might be leaking, you might have things sticking to it. So I'd look to see if anything looks damaged there. Um, see all my hydraulic lines. I'm looking at the back of the bucket where it attaches. We've got a quick attach on this. So I do have pins in there as well. Um, but I'm making sure that all the connections look secure. All the, uh, anywhere where I might have a joint, making sure it looks secure there. I'm then coming around the front. And then on the tool on the bucket up front, uh, no matter what you have on there, you're looking at the cutting edge on the wheel loader, seeing if there's excessive wear. Those can be taken off and replaced if needed, but you're also making sure it's secure. So there's bolts all the way down around there. Make sure the bolts look all on there and secure. See if there's any damage, anything obvious on the, uh, on the bucket that might need to be addressed or if we need to swap it. And then I'm coming around this side. Same thing, I'm looking behind, making sure the quick attach, all the joints, everything looks greased appropriately. I don't see any leaks from any of the hoses. And then same thing, when I'm going up, you can see where our grease points are there. But I'm making sure all the pins, everything looks secured in there. There's nothing that's obvious that's sticking out. And the same thing on the front on this side. I'm looking at my hydraulic cylinders on this side for the boom. And don't see anything. You can also look a little bit underneath here to see if there's anything that might be sticking out from that side. So that's the complete walk around of the machine. Second piece I do is compartments. Uh, and so again, it's an opportunity to do a second pass around. So I've already gone over, so we have the windshield washer. Some of those are visual, you can catch on the general walk around, so I already showed you that. Um, and I already did pull the transfer case, the transmission uh, dipstick there, because I didn't have to open a compartment, but some people would do that at that time. But I'm going to keep coming back. Again, we talked about the air filter compartment. It's the main, one of the main engine compartments. Flip that up. So on this side, I'm looking at my coolant level. There's a coolant uh, reservoir there, making sure that is full. And then other than that, on this side, you're just looking to see if there's any obvious damage. Any of the, you know, anything that might be a hose could be ruptured, any of the wiring, anything that just doesn't look right. It doesn't take, you don't have to be a mechanic to look at something to say, yeah, it might not look right. You can also see the back of the radiator and some of the, you're looking at some of those, see if there's damage or anything like that in there. And then we'll continue around the back. Then continuing around the back, uh, in the bumper on the sides, uh, there is the battery compartment, so that's one you can flip up. And then the radiator flips up. I can look at the fan on this side, see if there's anything obvious, any damage, any of the hoses, anything. And then this will go back. I can see all of our, the radiator, the cooling fins, anything for the cooling system in there that if there's debris, anything in there, or if there looks like there's damage to that, it's something I might need to address. And overall, if they're just coated, if they're really dirty, it might be something you need to clean off. 
Everything looks good here. Then coming around the other side, again, this is that battery compartment. They're kind of built into the back. I call it the bumper. It's not necessarily a bumper, but it uh, looks like one. These are on each side on the Komatsu, so you flip it up. There's two batteries on here. Now, again, we don't do, you're just making sure they're secure. Um, you know, I would recommend once a week uh, or monthly at least checking to make sure there's no corrosion or anything like that. My main battery cutoff is right here, so making sure everything looks good there. And then on this side, Again, same thing kind of, I looked and now I'm looking at this side, there's some other things. I'm checking engine oil is right here. I would pull that, check the oil. I'm um, looking at my fuel filter uh, and you're, this is where you're looking if there's any uh, debris in that sight glass. Uh, water, something that you know sticks out, you might wanna, you're gonna have to drain that, uh, pull that out. But right now everything looks good on there in sight glass. And then I've got my air filter up there. There is a debris so you open that to see if there's anything clogged in there if i were to open that and see a lot of dust or things come out i'm probably going to pull the entire air filter out uh, typically we pull ours uh, once a week or so and we'll actually pull those out um, there's also an indicator so komatsu has a, it'll basically tell you when you need to change a filter um, there's a little spring that i can look and see the indicator right there and make sure everything's good after that Anytime I have the compartments open, I am just looking overall, really glancing. If I see any hoses that look like they're broken, uh, any belts or anything like that that might be damaged, wiring, there's just anything in it. Well, usually if you look, something doesn't look right, then you need to look into it further. And then the hydraulic fuel, or I'm sorry, the hydraulic oil is the indicator on the side of the machine. So I can see it in the sight glass there to let me know I'm at the appropriate level for that. And then finally on this side, uh, this has a, a DAF system, D, a diesel exhaust. So I'm looking at that. There is a sight glass I have in there along with my fill. So making sure that's good. And that's all the compartments for it. Now we're gonna go into the cab. So now that we did those two pieces, the final part is getting in the operator seat. I always like to make sure, first thing that doors always, they lock and latch. Again, on any piece of equipment, it's very important. These are, I've seen one too many people get hit in the back of the head if you don't latch these, uh, if wind hits them. And then I'm just making sure my steps, everything is secured. Usually on the wheel loaders, the bottom step is always kind of out of a uh, hard rubber. That way, if it goes over material, it can move. But I have seen these things get damaged. They, they're fairly easy to replace. Uh, but you want to make sure that bottom step is secure. So make sure I've got all the three points of contact to get all the way up and in. After I'm in the seat, some of the basics, check in. I always check seat belt first. So you'd make sure the seat belt works, latches in, everything's good there. And then I'm just going to check all my control surfaces to just make sure my joystick is free of free range. It's got movement everywhere. I did the boot that is attaching it is there to, uh, to keep that. And then everything else, I wanna make sure there's no obstruction to the brake pedals, the, the gas pedal, anything like that. And then overall, when I'm in here, before I start this up, I just like to look and see if there's any obvious damage that I might've missed. Uh, if there's broken glass, anything like that, that I might see. After I do all that, you'll then key it on. So with almost all of the newer equipment, they're gonna go through a cycle really quick to see, make sure the system's ready to start. Um, so it's always a good indicator. I'm looking at it, no warnings at all, and then I'll start it. After I start it, you like to just give it uh, 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, this is your fi my final check to, if I, something doesn't sound right, you know, while I'm still with the door open, uh, if I see something or hear something, and I'm also looking at my indicator lights to see if anything comes up. But then my final piece is to make sure I've got a full tank, uh, nothing else that I'm, I'm prepared to, to work for the day. I would also most likely check lights, other things like that, uh, again, just to make sure I'm ready. And that's the end of our pre-op inspection. Okay, now we're into our basic controls overview, kind of our 101 training. 
Now, the first thing I'll start with, if any of you are operators, again, I like to start at the very basic. So this may be, um, just bear with me while I go through some of the controls. We'll get into a little bit more advanced pieces on the next segment, um, but I wanna at least keep it uh, simple for new operators. So again, we're in a Komatsu wheel loader. Uh, a lot of the controls will be similar, uh, but each manufacturer may be a little bit different on the controls there. So. First thing I got in, again, we always secure our cabs. I like to have them enclosed uh, just for safety and also dust control, things like that. Uh, once you're in there, making sure you put a seatbelt on. And then just making sure the seat is comfortable to where you're at. You know, if you need to slide it forward, uh, just make sure you're comfortable however that seat is positioned. Now, uh, for our wheel loader that we're going over, it's a uh, single joystick and then steering wheel. Uh, some of the larger loaders nowadays will actually have just two joysticks, which it just basically takes the driving and moves it to your left hand. Uh, but I would say for the mid to smaller size, this is the more common configuration. Uh, now, what I'll do is I'll go over the basics here, but understand that you know there's always a little bit of variety and there's different things, but I'll try and cover those while I'm going over this. Now. For the wheel loaders, there's always a parking brake uh, that you want to make sure. So the moment I keyed it up, I'm looking on the dashboard. There's a solid red P on my display. So that means this thing's not going to move anywhere. Uh, and then on the Komatsu, there's a red lever, a red switch over here for the lockout for the joystick. So the joystick won't do anything with that. Now, with that said, I do like to tell people, even if it's running and parking brakes on, this thing will still articulate. For, so for a safety thing, I tell people, be careful when you're running, the steering is not deactivated on them. So now for us, for shifting, uh, I'm gonna go over the, the right joystick is the boom bucket, but I also wanna talk about shifting. There's two different ways to do it. Um, there's a shifter on the side of the steering column, and then you've also got a trigger switch on your right, and it's one or the other, it's not both. And usually, like Komatsu has a switch on the side here, I can switch it from either one. Now for a new operator, uh, I usually recommend steering with one hand, like I can do all my driving with my left, I can do all my uh, boom and bucket with my right, and that makes it simpler. Otherwise, I think an expert, you know, usually will just use that shifter on the right, um, but then you have to overlap your hands a little bit. So again, we try and make this really simple. Now I'm gonna take, um, that is, a I activated basically my joystick, I'm gonna take the parking brake off, uh, now, for there's simple controls too for the feet. You know, there's just it's a gas pedal and a brake pedal. Um, the Komatsu has two brakes, service brakes connected. Usually, you can just use your right. Now, if I start here with just my right joystick, it's pretty simple. Right hand pull back. It's going to raise the boom up. Now you'll see it's curling it away while I'm raising it. That's that auto level feature, which is exactly what you want it to do. If I didn't do that, uh, that thing and you curled it, I could actually curl material over the back uh, of it, which is not something you want to do. So pull back like that. Now, if I'm up high like this, if I go right hand to the right, it's going to open the bucket. And if I go right hand to the left, it will close the bucket. And they will stop on their own when they're all the way up there. And then right hand forward is going to bring the boom down. Now, if you noticed, and if you're excavator operators, you know, a lot of equipment crosses over. So those controls right there are the exact same as a excavator control pattern. Uh, it's gonna be your right hand boom and bucket. So the exact same. So again, they do start to overlap a little, make it a little bit easier for you. Now driving position for a wheel loader, uh, generally you don't wanna have this all the way down. If I was to lower this all the way down, you will actually drag the underside, the undercarriage of the bucket and where all the quick attaches, everything like that. So it's really not good. You wanna have it off the ground, usually a foot or so. Now on the other end of that, you don't wanna to be too high because if it was any higher, I wouldn't be able to, if I put this up here and I'm trying to drive with it, I can't see, I'm blocking my line of sight. So in general, you wanna have it down just so that hydraulic cylinder for the boom, or I'm sorry, for the bucket, and the bucket itself is right below your dashboard. So I can see all the way over it. Uh, the final piece, uh, we have new operators, at least for us, we have the buckets curled all the way in. That's usually not what most will do. Most are gonna have, I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit, and you're gonna have the bucket uncurled almost flat to go in. 
Uh, this does, it gives you a little bit better, better visibility, plus any lower you can be to the ground, the better. Um, so it's really a, a your preference, as long as you're down low, you obviously don't want to have the bucket open. Now for new operators on our buckets, we actually paint red lines on the corners, just because some people can't understand, you can't see the blade. But it is, the top of every single bucket, there's a kind of a straight bar that's going to be at the corners, that is your blade angle. So if you can see that, that's what it's going to be down low. So that's your right joystick. Now with your left, steering again, this is how we steer it, left or right. I think the biggest thing I tell people for new operators, you know, the tires don't actually turn. Uh, that's probably for someone driven, driving a truck car, we're used to the tires turning. The tires don't turn on a wheel loader, the entire machine articulates. The reason this can be important is, you'll notice if I start turning, if I'm trying to go to the left, my body is actually starts turning to the right. So it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, people that have been doing it for years, you're, we all get used to it, but I tell people uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to initially. Uh, the other thing I recommend is you'll get a lot of people driving like a car, like 10 and 2 here, something like that. Very inefficient. Uh, it's gonna, you're going to kill your shoulders because these turn a lot more than a car steering wheel would. And additionally, you're going to want your right hand on that joystick to control your boom bucket. That's why they almost all wheel loaders will have this kind of little steering knob here. And this way, I can just use my left hand. I can just grab that thing. I can go all the way one way and all the way the other. So that's generally how you want to steer. Now for our shifter, we've got, I'm using the steering column one, so there's forward neutral reverse here um, that just flips through it. And then I've got a speed setting, one, two, three, and four right there that can rotate this. Uh, that's our preferred for beginners, that's our preferred driving uh, way to shift it. Again, because it keeps everything, left hand is all you're driving, right hand is your boom bucket. As you go further along, you may desire to change that over and we'll go over that a little bit more in the next advanced one. Now that I'm good there, I'm going to put it in forward. Now you'll notice these things really won't move. Uh, there's a service brake on them, but typically because of the hydraulics in these things, they're not going to, unless you're going down a hill, that's probably about the only time you're going to need to use a brake pedal on these. So I'm going to give it some, a little bit of throttle here, and I'm going to go right towards this pile. Now, it's a scoop. Big thing here, uh, we don't, you can't go in with your bucket curled all the way up. You obviously, this is where we're looking at that blade angle. You want to have those kind of lines horizontal to the ground. You also don't, depending on the material, like right now I'm on the ground. You generally, we like to be scraping right above it. For a new operator, I actually prefer to be about six inches to a foot off the ground because if, if, if you're going to have an error or an oops, I'd rather you be higher than lower. Lower means you either are getting under that pile you're creating a huge divot, whatnot. Above is fine. Uh, you'll have more material that someone else can scrape up later. So it's always better to start just a little bit higher if you need to. Now, to get a full scoop, now let's go in here and kind of show. A lot of new operators will go in and I'm in there right now. I just curl the bucket, curl it all the way up. Now that is very inefficient. Uh, you don't just go in and just curl. It's not going to really load that bucket. So I'm going to raise this up and just dump this. Again, as I pull back, you see how I raise it up. And then I'm actually going to drive forward just a little bit so I can get over the top here. And then I go right hand to the right to dump. After we always dump the final piece, uh, again, I, I recommend always having it curled up. Most of the newer wheel loaders will have kind of a return to dig feature. So like on the Komatsu, if I just take my right hand and just go like that, it locks it to the left and it's going to stop when it's level. And this makes it much easier when you're doing this repetitively. Some of these features though, I'll tell you, uh, for a new operator, it's nice to turn them off so you know how to do it manually. Now for reverse, I'm looking, I got a backup camera in this. I've got mirrors like it would in the car. And it's also good to look over your shoulder. I'm going to back up just far enough to bring this down. Neutral and bring this back down. Now again, if I did that return to dig, it actually holds that blade angle. Bring it down and I'm going to open just a hair more. Sometimes I'll go down, I'll touch the ground because you can't see the bottom of the bucket, but I can feel it touch and if I know that I raise it up. So that was kind of the wrong way to do it because you don't just go in and, and curl a bucket. You're not going to get a really full scoop of anything. There's really the way to do it. Now I'm in there. Now a couple of things. First of all, you do not want to spin your tires. 
especially if you don't own that machine, uh, you're putting a lot of undue wear. So anytime you're spinning those tires, you're uh, you're wearing down the outside of those tires. They're expensive tires, and it really doesn't do any good. It creates divots, holes there. So most uh, will have a traction control. So we actually, on our Kamatsu, we have it on auto traction. Uh, I can set it to a lower setting, because mine will, if you see this right now, they will, you see I can start spinning them like that. So it's it will happen if I don't change the setting, but for an operator, you just need to manage that. I'm kind of looking, you can feel it. Now the real way to get a full bucket though is kind of three motions at the same time. While you're driving into it, I'm gonna start pulling back on that boom. You wanna raise that up in there. What's that? That's doing two things. One, it's forward motion into the pile, but more importantly, the action of pulling the boom back and raising it up is actually putting downward pressure on my front axle, my front tires. Uh, so that's gonna even give me a little bit more traction um, to go into that. So at the very end then, usually up around my steering, you know, dashboard steering wheel, that's when I curl it and you should get a really full bucket. So if I start giving, I'm watching my tires and as I'm going up, now I'm starting to curl it as well and I'm driving in there and you'll see how much more I got. It's coming off the back. Again, same thing, I'm gonna back up. Now, while you're backing up, this is where you also need to look at your height. You know, you want to be low and tight to the ground. The machines are very unstable at a high, at, at any kind of height. Now that I'm back there, but I can see how much more, and I'm bringing it down so I can see over. You will lose a little bit of material, you see, if you open it too much, but it's curled all the way right now. Drive that around once. So now what you want to do for dumping, you want to try and so as I go forward here, I'm going to try and I'm going to start raising the boom. So I'm pulling back on my right hand here. Now, ideally you want to be lined up straight in line. That's where you're most stable. So as I come around here, I'm going to go straight my machine back out. So I'm basically in line. I'm going to my tires are touching the base raising it up here. You'll notice how that auto level has been curling that bucket away from me. Again, that's a good thing. Keep doing that. Otherwise you have the risk of dumping everything over the back of that. As I raise it up then, now I'm good. I will start to dump it right there. After I dump again, and if you have sticky material, sometimes you can bang it just a little bit to get that material out. Uh, but after that, either return to dig here, or I'll just do it manually this time. I'm just gonna curl it. It doesn't ever really hurt to curl it all the way. It'll stop on its own, but that way you know it's closed, and then I'm gonna back up. As I'm backing up, looking where I'm going on my backup camera, I'm bringing that back down, low and tight to the ground. Go around, we'll do one more scoop. We'll do one more and I'll kind of show you the what not to do. Same thing as I'm going up, opening that, bringing it down, driving in, trying to avoid spinning those tires, which can be tough. I'm in a sand environment, so it's really tough to get traction. Curling that up, raising it right there. Now, a couple of things here. It's important to stay, this is why low and tight. I've got a loaded bucket here. If I pull this back, what you don't wanna do, if I keep raising it up and I'm trying to back up, you'll see I'm very top heavy right now. You'll see how the whole machine is swaying. I definitely don't wanna hit reverse too much here. It's all about knowing your center of gravity. Wheel loaders are extremely top heavy. You do not wanna have that all that weight up high. You wanna be down low. So that's why it's very important. As you're coming back, you're bringing this down. Anytime you can be below your dashboard, that's gonna be a fairly safe place where your very your machine's very stable. Um, but what you don't wanna do is have that thing way up in the sky driving around there. So, now, 
to get this loaded bucket here, I will tell you this, uh, and I think I've sent this in other videos, there is no video you're gonna watch, there's no class you're gonna take to become really good at getting these full scoops without spinning tires, things like that. It's all, it's a seat time. Get in there, get stick time, practice. Uh, that's really what you need to do. I'm gonna pull this back. So the same thing when I talk about being careful when you're up high, if I drive forward here and I'm trying to, you know, my tires start driving up this mound, it is really easy You'll see right there, again, knowing my center of gravity where my machine is, uh, because the machine is not as stable when I'm like this. So if I turn it like that, my entire machine is kind of pivoting to the right. This is why it's important not to let the tires drive up, try and stay flat. And I'm gonna dump this right here. Perfect, and we'll do reverse, and I start backing up. Bring this down. I'll stop right there. I'm bringing it down and putting it in park. Lock lever there. Perfect. So that's the end of our basic controls, the 101 series. We'll go into more skills in the next segment. Okay, so this next is, uh, we're calling it advanced skills, uh, 201. Uh, you know, a little bit just going, we went over our basic controls already. I think just going over some other pieces there. The biggest thing I really showing, and I just want to go over it a little bit again, is uh, how to get that full scoop and also the traction control pieces in there. Um, the thing I do want to go over too is shifting. You no, know, so the Komatsu, there is a switch on this side that I can switch and I can do my gear shifting with the joystick, uh, which is a little bit easier. If you have knowing, a lot of it's knowing your machine, what switches do what, because if I try and use my shifter on there, because that's engaged, it beeps at me. So you have to kind of understand which one is set on there. But I do think for an, uh, an operator, once you're good, that you've kind of got the hand, you know which does what, I do think using your thumb control is probably a little bit easier. That way you don't have to go take your hand off that steering knob at all. Everything can be controlled there. Now, um, coming up here, and again, we have really this, I, I'd actually say we have a good training environment in sand because it's the worst of the worst to um, scoop in because it's just really tough to get, your, tr your tires are gonna wanna spin. And that's, for an operator, that's really bad. You don't want that. Um, but going into it, just a few things there is you wanna make sure that you've got that bucket flat to the ground. What normally will happen here is if you have that bucket down too much, even just a little bit, what happens is you end up digging in here and I end up creating a trench. And then what happens is now my tire is going to go into that trench. So now I'm down in it. I keep loading my bucket here. That's the toughest part for a new operator, as you see, I just created a big trench there. Just by having that off is you're kind of creating that slope or that grade. So that's a piece we're knowing, I'm gonna come forward here. So making sure that your bucket is flat to the ground. Otherwise, if you have that go under, you know, into that breaks the surface level, it's really tough for the next operator, whoever is on that pile, especially if it's a, you know, if you're looking at a big pile of gravel, whatever it is you're loading, a lot of times that's gonna be on top of black dirt or whatever it is there. And you, if it's a soft material, you do not wanna mix that. You don't wanna uh, combine the two. So again, keeping that as solid as you can and knowing what your tires are gonna drive over. But I can't, the other pieces too that are important, so I kind of drive into that. This is where it's really, you start feeling that. You're gonna feel like, I can start to feel my tires starting to spin, but then pulling back on that. When you pull back on that, on a normal hard pack surface, that's gonna give, bring all that weight down on your front, which is hopefully gonna give you better traction. Now again, with our sand, it kind of spins a little bit, but it does help me a little bit. 
pull that all the way up and I'm moving all the way in and then I'm getting a full bucket. For this, it's all about if you're loading trucks or whatnot, you wanna maximize that load. Uh, we have a three yard bucket on here that's probably a pretty common, but the, the quicker you can do this and then the more efficient if you're getting a full bucket, the better it's gonna be. You're gonna be a lot more productive. So that's why making sure you have a nice full bucket and you're not doing, you're keeping the ground as clean as possible. Now, I'm gonna dump this. Right at the base. Now, the other piece I wanna go over is floating the blade. So this is, uh, while wheel loaders are not great for grading just because you've got those, you're on four tires. You know, any time a wheeled machine, you're putting all that weight on four. It is, there's, to smooth things out, it's often you can back drag similar to what you do in a dozer or a skid steer. Now there's two different ways to do this. First of all, you set it down flat to the ground. And then what you're trying to do is flatten the, the bucket to there. And then for most com the Komatsu machines, I just take that right joystick and I go all the way forward with it and it locks it forward. This is very similar to like a skid steer. A lot of the machines will do the same thing. Now I can still go right or left with it if I did want to open or close it, but I basically disengaged the boom cylinder. Now you never want to go forward with it like this, but reverse then I can go backwards here and this would smooth out my material in front. Now that's flat. The other thing you can do is if you have this bucket fully loaded, you're adding all that weight to really compact it down. Now at the end of these, you kind of pull it. You don't necessarily raise it all the way up. If you have a pile of dirt behind there, uh, you don't want to just leave a pile there. So it's kind of dragging it out. Now I raised it. I took it out of float just by pulling back on that. That's one way to do it. The other way, if it's a really rough area, is using the bottom uh, where I can see the back of the blade. So if I open my bucket at about a 45, you don't necessarily want to roll it all the way in. Uh, you want to try and keep it, I would say about a 45 slope, but I want to be able to see behind it. I'm setting that down. Same thing now though, I'm going to disengage and I'm floating the blade so I can see behind it. And now again, I will start my reverse. This will actually take a load of material behind. So it's almost like a dozer blade where you're carrying if you need to fill in any holes. Important to look where you're going while you're backing. Again, great thing about Komatsu, you have a backup camera right there, so I can see. But you'll see how this will smooth things out. And then at the end of this, this is more important to not just pull the blade, because otherwise I'll leave a big pile. I'm going to take it out of float, so I popped it out, and I'm going to keep backing up, and I'm just going to raise it just a little bit. And you're trying to let this just drag out on its own, till the blade is kind of hanging up in the air. So now my blade, I made it pretty smooth there. It's up in the air and now I'm good. So those are two ways you can float the blade. Uh, the other thing, you can use that same concept a little bit with, I'll show you how to, if you're trying to spread material. So really two ways to do this. Uh, generally, if I'm working with a fairly flat surface, I'd rather spread going in reverse, just because if you try and spread going forward, i can show you that a little bit, you're gonna end up driving over it and you're not gonna get a smooth. So right here, if I raise this, I usually like to raise it high enough to where I can see, and you just start, you see how it started to fall out, and sometimes it's kind of shaking that a little bit to let that material spread out sometimes shaking it, depending on how much material you have, shaking it open, shaking it closed, either way. But you'll see how my tires go over that because it's not smoothed out. Uh, I, the way I think it's easier is to go backwards with it. And I'm backing up, I'm watching where I'm going. And I'm just trying to lay it somewhat evenly, knowing how much material I'm trying to lay. Now the only benefit to doing this in forward is at the end of that, I'd be able to basically drop that thing and back right over it. So if I were to spread that, and I happen to have a lot on this part here, well, I'll go all the way forward. You can feel how I'll go over all this. 
this is the probably the biggest challenge. And this, again, loaders are not great for spreading material. They're not designed to really grade. You know, mainly you can't, it's a fixed blade or a fixed bucket. They don't pivot at all. So uh, this is not something you generally want to use. But now if I roll that blade up, I can try and cut through all that and smooth it out while I'm going over it. But you see how my machine is going up and down over those, watching where I'm going. But I will basically grab that material and then I'm going to raise it up while I'm spreading it. And I think that's a perfect example of how this machine's not great at grading. <laughs> and you'll even feel worse if you try and scoop. If I try and drag this along, generally what'll happen is you're gonna scrape right down into the ground like that. Um, so it's just not a great machine. They're usually designed to move material right up in to either uh, loading a dump truck. That's really what the ideal is for one of the loaders. So I'm gonna dump what I have left here. So that's some extra techniques with loading, or I'm sorry, with filling the bucket, and then also with using the float. Now what I want to go over is uh, the accessories, basically changing out to put forks, uh, whatnot. Most machines, most wheel loaders, well, I'll back up. I would say not all of them do, but a lot of them will have a quick attach, similar to a skid steer, where you can put different accessories on it. You know, I'd probably say one of the more common ones is forks, but you can also put big snow blades on there to push, a lot of things like that. Typically, you're gonna have this hydraulic controlled. Uh, and what I mean by that is there's gonna be a switch in the cab. There is some systems, uh, if you have to actually go out manually and do it, it's not quite as easy. But uh, what you can do, if I open, I can see right now there's a hydraulic cylinder behind, I can see it pushed out my pin. So right now they're secured, and you can always verify. I would have seen this an issue earlier. With this now, to change this out, uh, I have a quick uh, release right here. So you have to curl it all the way in. I'm in neutral right now. So curl it all the way up and I hold that, it's going to beep and this is where I give it a, I go all the way to the left with my right joystick and give it some throttle to make sure the hydraulic has enough pressure to pull it out. And then I'm just rolling it to set down. Throwing it in reverse. Now you'll see I have just two pins that are basically, well, first of all, it hooks, any accessory will hook on the top like that. And then you can see where I have, and this also is a grease point that a lot of people might miss, is those two pin cylinders. So if you, it's really tough to kind of see here. I can see it perfectly, but this is, if you don't know, I always tell people, get that bucket off and get this right in front of you. And you can roll this. So if I hold that in right now, right there. So right now it's actually the pins are out so I can actually see the silver. If I now I can see them going in and you can see them pushing all the way in to know there the pins are closed. Um, so that's a good way to check the machine without it on there. It's really easy to see. And then if I hold this, it'll retract them. That one. Hold that. So now, once you go up here, now if I want to attach forks, I've got those there. You're going to roll that bucket. You don't want to go into it with this thing curled all the way up. You need to remember, you're just trying to hook two points there. So you want that bucket open. You know, I'd say at about a 45, because you're going to kind of roll those pins right in, or the connections right in there, the hooks. So I'm coming in, lowering it. And then, as gentle as possible, you're trying to just hook. Once you have those two hooks on there, then I'm just raising it, and I can try and start curling it at the same time. Now that's there, if I wasn't retracted, sometimes the pins may have gone back. I like to make sure they're, well, first of all, put it in neutral. I've seen that, too, where you hit the throttle to, to do that, and you might make that thing fall in. So I go ahead and hold that. And I make sure, as you can see, one of the pins partially will go back in. But you saw that drop down more. Um, so ideally, you want to have that retracted all the way before you go in there. But now that I knew it dropped in there, now I take my finger off that release. And now I'm just holding that, giving it some throttle here. And that'll put the pins back out. Usually, you'll be able to see it. 
I can see the cylinders there. I can see where they push it out so I can, I have a visual indicator, but I always recommend checking as well. And that's just by, if you roll this, if I have the bucket or anything else, forks, if you just, after it's attached there, if you roll it away, put a little bit of downward pressure. If it wasn't secured, it's gonna pop right off. So that way you know. Now I've got forks on the machine. So I'll just, uh, you know what, let's go talk about a little bit about using the forks. Okay, for us here, uh, well, you'll have a lot of different things you move forks. We use junk cars. A um, couple of things. I may not have mentioned this when I swap out. Most machines will have a switch uh, to f uh, basically between bucket and forks. Really, it just adjusts the kick out on what it's, uh, when you're raising it, what that's doing. So uh, again, it's, I, it's not that important if you don't have it, but that's, there's a switch here that you generally want to switch to your forks uh, when you're switching there. Now, anytime, you know, we talk a little bit about center of gravity earlier, especially with the wheel loader, is knowing where your center point is on this machine. Uh, typically, it's gonna be near this steering column, it's, but it moves as you turn. But that's also important knowing what you're picking up. So for us, you know, I've got a minivan here. I'm watching my forks. Now, this is important to, you know, wheel loaders, because they're larger machines, anytime you put forks, it can be tough to see those forks, but you're under, you're trying to not let them dig in. Uh, again, guide them in, it can be tough. If you're moving uh, palleted things or, you know, it's not, forklifts are more designed to have better visibility of this. Wheel loaders can usually pick up more, but because they're such, the way the boom arm is, it can be tough to see. But knowing I'm picking up, let's say a car here, I know the weight on this is in the front with the engine. So I'm getting up there and then I just slowly roll this. Now, after I have it there, I'm curling that bucket in a little bit. And I can see how it's tilting just a little bit, but that way I'm holding this right there. Now, if I pull back again, that auto level is gonna keep that at that height. But this is where it's extremely important to understand your weight, your balance, uh, anything higher. It's, a, it's no different than having a dirt bucket. If you have a bunch of load over your dashboard, over your head, you're gonna get in trouble. That's where these machines can be very, uh, you know, they're top heavy. So I'm gonna keep it at this height or lower and I'm just trying to make sure I have everything, you know, down reasonably to the ground where I'm not dragging it. And I'll bring this back and I'm gonna set it back down. This also is where when you can't see your forks, similar to how we talk about on the top of the bucket, you can see the, the blade angle. Fork, uh, on forks, that whole frame right there, assembly, you can kind of look, if you understand, look at the top bar, and that I know matches my forks. So I know if I can see that, I'm gonna see if they're tilting down or up either way. And then as I'm going, I'm trying not to drag it there. Watching where I'm backing up. And then we'll go back and we will switch it back to a dirt bucket. Okay, everyone, so that's the end of our more advanced 201 training session. Uh, now we'll go into what the parking and end of uh, shift procedures are. So at the end of shift then, a couple of things, we're gonna find whatever, wherever we're parking it, we wanna get the bucket flat. So you wanna try and have that where it's flat to the ground, then I'm gonna set it down gently so the bottom of that bucket is resting on the ground, right there. After that, you're gonna do your lockout levers, parking brake, I wanna see a solid red parking brake on there, that way I know I'm not going anywhere. And then before I shut the machine down, I usually these things do not need to, they don't want them to idle that much the newer machine, the newer tier four with the emission control. So, um, well, basically it's 30 seconds, it's fine. But I am looking at my gauges. Obviously you're gonna wanna fill it up if you need any diesel exhaust fluid. It's always good at the end of the shift to make sure that you're all set for the next day. So I'm making any notes on any of that. Look good there. Turn it off. Now what's important here is, you know, some of the little details at the end of a shift. Uh, it's not just jump out, lock it, you know, head out for the day. First of all, cleaning your equipment. You know, take pride in your equipment. 
if you don't own it, it's something that someone else is paying for. But otherwise, if you're also sharing the equipment, it's something that, you know, if someone else is going to get in that equipment, they want to see you respect your you're carrying, you, you don't leave a bunch of trash in it. So looking around, make sure you don't have any trash. And then we usually sweep out our machines so we keep a broom in them. Again, when you're getting out, making sure that door locks open. Coming out. And then we normally have, we'll have a little hand broom or something here to sweep those out so they're nice and clean. Three points contact coming all the way down. Securing that. After that, after you've secured that, and I'm also making sure the windows are locked, things like that, I always like to do a quick walk around on my equipment as well, just to make sure that there's no new damage. If you Obviously, if something happened during your shift, you're gonna wanna report it, but we wanna look at anything going around the machine to see if we see anything obvious to the machine that we might need to address. Uh, but everything on this machine looks good. Okay, everyone, so that is the end of our complete wheel loader training video. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Uh, we do have other videos on our YouTube channel that breaks it down into different segments, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching.